Two years into World War II, the tide changed as the United States joined the conflict. Knowing that their powerful U-boats would not be enough to stop the American forces, the Luftwaffe resorted to a wonder weapon that they had disregarded as impossible to develop. It was a rocket-powered suborbital bomber, codenamed Silbervogel or Silver Bird, that could cross the Atlantic and launch missiles to strike New York. Its creators, Eugen Zenger and his wife Irene Brett, began a desperate race against time to develop the secret weapon and subjugate the approaching U.S. Army. The fate of the America bomber mission and the outcome of the war now depended solely on the work of an Austrian engineer. The Rocket Plane After the end of World War I, engineers from the most developed European nations and the United States shared the dream of creating an aircraft capable of reaching the atmosphere. Even authors such as Jules Verne and H.G. Wells also fed into the idea of airplanes that could fly into Earth's orbit and land safely again. Brilliant engineers such as Werner von Braun, Robert Goddard, and Sergei Korolev would eventually lay the founding pillars of spaceflight. And with time, their ultimate dream would not just become real, but would go beyond Earth and towards the moon. Among these geniuses was Austrian-born Eugen Sanger, the future father of the reusable space transporter. Sanger was born on September 22, 1905, in the small town of Komatau, Bohemia, which was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire under Habsburg rule. From a very young age, Sanger became fascinated with the humble beginnings of aviation and the possibilities of spaceflight. Then, at 16, one of his physics teachers gave him a copy of a novel titled Two Planets. This book became the foundation of his love of aeronautics and space. Sanger would then expand his mind with the works of physicist and engineer Hermann Obert, one of the pioneers of astronautics and rocketry. The book, By Rocket into Planetary Space, convinced the young enthusiast to study aeronautics and not civil engineering. In the following years, Eugen joined the Rocket Movement, or Society for Space Travel, which closely followed the work of Obert. Sanger then attended Technische Hochschule in Vienna. In 1928, he tried to submit a doctoral degree focused on rocket-powered aircraft, but was rejected. The topic was new, and few had faith in it. The manuscript was focused on the future development of a rocket plane that burned liquid oxygen and petrol, and could reach speeds of up to Mach 10 and altitudes of 70 kilometers. The concept was quite futuristic for its time, as the turbojet engine had not yet made its debut, but Zanger was confident that it all would come true one day. The opening pages read, quote, the main object of this book is to direct discussion of rocket flight into serious channels and to free it from its former fantastic notions, which have understandably but technically desirably prevented sober consideration by engineers busy with major other matters. The book was filled with ideas that would eventually become extremely important for NASA during the post-war space race against the Soviet Union. As he successfully established the main differences and similarities between rockets and aircraft, and the technical requirements for sending a rocket to the stratosphere. Zanger's idea of a rocket was named Silbervogel, or Silver Bird, and in 1934, he included a drawing and more details about it in an article for the magazine Fluch. The Silver Bird would have wings the size of a standard aircraft for increased lift, and small tail surfaces that would render an exhaust velocity of 3,700 meters per second and a steady glide of Mach 3.5. The Silver Bird concept would eventually evolve into something else, and Zanger would finally get one step closer to developing it once Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party rose to power. Developing a Concept Zanger joined the German Experimental Institute in 1935, where he was appointed technical director of rocket research. Development of the V-1 and V-2 rockets was just beginning, but Zanger was not involved in the project as the rockets were exclusively developed at Pinamunda Army Research Center. He then met mathematician Irene Brett at the Institute and married her shortly after. She would then become his assistant and an essential part in the development of the Silver Bird. In 1936, Zanger published another article in the magazine Fluck about his desired Silbervogel, attracting the attention of the German Air Ministry. The organization believed that Zanger's rocket plane ideas had the potential to develop a bomber that could strike the United States in case of conflict. Zanger's Silver Bird concept was based on a vehicle that would propel itself to the upper atmosphere and glide down to Earth with no power until it made contact with denser air. 
the rocket plane would then use kinetic energy to skip the atmosphere and reach higher altitudes like a stone skipping along the water. Each skip would reduce the rocket's energy until it finally glided towards its objective. According to Zanger and Brett's calculations, a rocket plane launched from Germany to strike New York would require three skips. The Silver Bird would be able to deliver a 4,000-kilogram bomb on top of the American East Coast and continue its trajectory until it reached a landing site in Japan through the Pacific, flying over 24,000 kilometers in total. Hermann Göring was excited about the idea and regarded it as the bomb he'd been searching for since 1938. Quote, I completely lack the bombers capable of round-trip flights to New York with a 4.5-ton bomb load. I would be extremely happy to possess such a bomber, which would at last stuff the mouth of arrogance across the sea. The America Bomber In 1941, Zanger and Brett offered the Silver Bird to the German Air Ministry and proposed launching the rocket plane from a hypersonic glider with a rocket-powered sled. Upon release from the sled, the Silver Bird would be launched upwards until the pilot fired the engine, launching the craft to space at Mach 24. During the fall of that year, Zanger attempted to submit two papers titled On a Rocket Propulsion for Long-Distance Bombers and Work on Rocket Drive for Long-Range Bomber and Skip Reentry, but they were rejected by the German bureaucracy. Still, he managed to receive support from some Luftwaffe experts that helped him publish his papers as a secret command report. The details of the Silver Bird were then sent to aircraft experts such as Willy Messerschmitt, Ernst Henkel, Ludwig Prandl, and even Werner von Braun in a desperate attempt to gain support for the America Bomber, the initiative to build a long-range strategic bomber that could strike the United States. The Silver Bird was expected to have a length of 28 meters, a wingspan of 15 meters, and an approximate weight of 110 tons. Contrary to von Braun's vision, Zanger's rocket plane would launch horizontally. For the launch, a rocket sled would propel the Silver Bird through a three-kilometer-long track until it achieved a velocity of 500 meters per second. Afterward, the Silver Bullet would climb to an altitude of 48 to 70 kilometers, powered by its rocket engine, before resorting to a glide flight. Although the Silver Bird was an ambitious and solidified project that fulfilled the request of the America bomber, the Luftwaffe decided to cancel the project and focus on the development of more aircraft to defend the motherland against the terrible mass bombing raids conducted by the Allies. Zanger's dream of sending a rocket to the stratosphere to deliver its bomb load on New York and then land on Japan was briefly resurrected in 1944, but it was all in vain. By then, Germany had no chance of winning the war. Soviet Capture Attempt When the war ended in 1945, Zanger and his wife were transferred to France to work for the French government. Then, in 1949, they founded the Astronautic Federation. While living in France, secret Soviet agents closely followed Zanger to get information about his projects. Joseph Stalin was deeply intrigued about the Silver Vogel suborbital bomber and wanted to persuade Zanger to work for the Soviet Union. If Zanger and his wife refused to work for them, they were to be captured and sent to the USSR. For this task, Stalin sent his own son, Vasily, and scientist Grigory Tokati. The kidnap eventually failed, but Stalin did not give up on the idea of using the Silver Bird to attack the U.S. Using documents that the Soviets had stolen at the end of the war, a modified Silver Bird named Keldish was envisioned, but it was never developed. Similarly, the U.S. used the papers written by Zanger to develop the X-20 dinosaur spaceplane. Zanger's writings were then translated to push the technological capabilities of NASA and win the space race. In 2010, DARPA's ArcLight program announced that it was exploring the development of a boost glide re-entry vehicle with a naval launch tube rocket that would fire an unmanned Silver Bird into space, followed by a hypersonic re-entry. As of this day, DARPA has not given more information about this peculiar project and the use of its revamped Silver Bird. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of this German attempt at developing a suborbital bomber. Stay tuned.